In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to light some fires and create some awesome macro shots right from the comfort of your own home. So I'm taking photos of matches. Now, why should you bother taking photos of matches? Well, three good reasons. Well, one, it looks damn cool and you can get some pretty creative results. Two, between lockdown and crappy winter weather, going outside for lovely landscapes is just off the cards right now. So I'm trying to keep my photography skills up by doing some cool creative projects at home. And three, macro shots are great fun to do, and this one in particular can be a really good learning exercise in how to balance ambient light with flash. So let's go and take a look at the setup that I've got going on here. I've got my Canon 5D4 on a tripod so it's all locked down and stable, and on the front I've got my 100mm macro lens, but you can use any lens for this, doesn't even need to be a macro lens, you can use a regular lens with a macro extension tube. Now I've talked a lot about macro extension tubes before, but basically they're just these little plastic rings that go between the lens and your camera, and essentially they turn any standard lens into a macro lens. So if you're looking for macro on the cheap, these are a great way to go. I've been putting my matches in this little clamp here, which just attaches onto the tripod. What that means is that the position doesn't really move, so I don't need to be moving my camera around too much. Once I've got the match in place, I can pretty much focus and take my shot. Although what you can see is that I've been doing quite a lot of tests so far, not all of them successful. I've got a plain sweep of grey paper, but you could use any background for this. You could just use a piece of regular paper. You could use an empty wall. Any of these white walls would be fine. Or you could hang a blanket or even a t-shirt or something up. You don't need a lot of space because it's only a very small subject. So step one is actually setting up the shot. And for this one, what I want is the match itself to be very much in the right thirds of the scene, leaving a lot of negative space, hopefully to fill with all the smoke which is gonna come off the match. I think it's gonna look really, really cool. So as you can see, I've got uh, it's set up, it's pretty much in the right thirds. Because I've got the match in the same clamp, um, I already know that the positioning is basically fine, but my focus has shifted a little bit. So I'm gonna focus in on the match head until it is pin sharp. Manually focusing, it's more accurate than autofocus and just means that I can keep firing away in burst mode without having to worry about autofocus later on. Okay, let's talk about the lighting because that has been the trickiest part for me to figure out. It's actually a surprisingly complicated shot. In order to get a shot that captures the matchstick itself, the smoke swirling off it, and of course the flame, you need to balance your settings really well. You need quite a fast shutter speed to keep the swirling smoke nice and sharp, and you also need a narrow aperture to make sure that the whole matchstick is in focus. And then of course there's the flame itself, which is overpoweringly bright, so you need to make sure that you're underexposing your shot to capture that. Now those of you quite familiar with shooting in manual mode and dialing in your exposure, might just be thinking, okay, fine, so you need to underexpose your shot and have a narrow aperture for your match. Sure, just ramp up the shutter speed and use f8 and you're good to go. Well, let's just take a look at what happens if all we're doing is making a dark image. Okay, so let's say then I'm using f6.3 to make sure that the match itself is pin sharp and I'm at maybe 400th of a second shutter speed. In fact, no, let's just go with 250th in order to try and keep the shot dark enough that the bright flame that's going to erupt does not get overexposed. So let's just do that. Light our match. And you can see here, I can bring it in and I can just, in fact, we don't need to light the second one. Let's just take that shot and you can see exactly what I mean. So what we've got in this shot is that the flame itself is exposed well enough in that the orange has not been completely blown out, but the image itself is so dark that you can't see the matchstick, you can't see anything else, you wouldn't be able to see the smoke. It's really only exposed for that brightest part of the image, the center of the flame. So basically, we need to bring in a lot more light to light up with that match and everything else in that image that we can't even see. So I'm not gonna go into huge amounts of detail about exactly what it is that I've done, because honestly, it's taken me a lot of goes to kind of 
figure out what light is right and it would make this video far too long and far too boring but I will tell you what I've eventually come up with and I found it best to rely on ambient light still mostly with this LED light that I've got here. You don't need a big thing like this. You could use a small like handheld LED light panel. You could even maybe just use like, the flash from your iPhone. Um, I haven't tried that, but it's worth experimenting with. Um, and I'm also just using a, uh, a cheap Godox flash here, the AD200, um, just to add an extra little bit of kick. Now I've found by balancing those settings that I can not only light the matchstick itself, get a good exposure on the mat on the match flame but also still get some nice detail in that smoke so I'm balancing all three elements so I'm going to go into the shot now show the settings and I'm going to take some shots so my scene is set up we've got this light in nice and close it's basically just to make it as powerful as possible on the match itself I've got a fresh one all in its clamp ready to go the composition is set up on the camera and I've got my uh, Godox light here. Now you can see on the front, I have got one of my mag mod uh, mag spheres um, as well as a, a mag grid. Um, I don't really know if that's doing anything. It is slightly helping to focus the light on there so it doesn't spill everywhere, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to be quite honest in this case. So we can see the composition and it's basically the same thing that I said before in that we want the match on the right and the smoke coming out to the left. In this shot I do want it to be quite a smoky image so I'm probably going to let the match burn down till it's pretty much out and starts smoking and I might try another one later on where it's much more focused on the flame itself but the settings that I've dialed in for this f6.3 250th of a second this is basically the exact same uh, uh, settings that we used from the previous shots but now we've got our LED light switched on and we've got the speed light so let's just take a quick test without any flame just to see what this looks like and we can see the difference already the match is perfectly exposed I've got nice light coming in from both sides it's already looking like a good image but because I know that the ambient light was enough uh, to get the flame nice and exposed pretty confident that all I need to do is just set it on fire and start shooting away. So let's do exactly that. Okay, so everything's in place. I'm just going to do a quick test first of all by just striking a match and just holding it in place, taking a shot and just double checking how that looks first. So strike the match, bring it in, make sure it's in frame. And it's looking great. Yeah, the flame itself is really nicely exposed, the, as is the match, so I'm pretty happy. Let's go ahead and light the main match. Now at this point I'm going to keep firing away, because obviously as the flame starts to eat the wood away, it changes. Um, in this case it's bending a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. blow it out, try and capture some of that smoke too. So some of these shots are looking okay on the back of camera, but one of the big problems that I've just had is that the match as it's burnt has started to bend towards the camera. In so doing, it's meaning that this front bit is no longer in focus because our focus point is actually a few millimeters behind. Now that might not seem like a lot, but at this distance that actually does make the difference between it being in focus and not. So. It is a little bit of trial and error. That's why I have so many dead matches down here. So I'm going to have to just pull this one out, pop a new one in, and we're going to go again. Pop the new one in. We've moved it, of course, straighten it up slightly. I can see on the back of camera again exactly where it is and what it's doing. Double check my focus. Looking good. And then we try it again. Strike. So one thing that's almost a little bit annoying is that you only get the smoke from the match once the match goes out. And the smoke looks really cool and there's if you try enough images you'll get some really really great looking swirling patterns where it catches the light and it just looks really really nice but also I don't want a dead match I want to still have that little bit of flame going up it where it looks like it's burning so 
getting that blend of both flame and smoke in one shot isn't really possible. So what I'm going to be doing is basically taking multiple shots. I'm going to be taking a shot of the match where it's still got a bit of flame going up it. It has started to burn down. It has got some black curly bits of charcoal, but it hasn't fully gone out. And I'll be blending those with some of the other shots of flame. Uh, flame of smoke going through, compositing those together in Photoshop to get a finished image which has every element that I want. But the Photoshop stage, that comes later. Right now, it's just about taking more shots, getting more swirling patterns, getting more flames. Each time you light the match, you don't know that it's gonna burn down in exactly the same way. So basically, the more times you do it, the more likely it is that you're gonna get that one shot where the flame is exactly right, and it just looks really, really cool. So get a box of matches, keep putting them in, play around with your settings, play around with your exposure. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You can use home lamps, you can use LED, you could try and use natural light um, and just see how it goes. But for now, I'm gonna keep shooting away and then we'll take these over into Photoshop. Okay, so you're joining me now in Lightroom. I've imported some of the photos. I ended up taking hundreds and hundreds of different shots of smoke swirling in different ways because Every time you take a different photo, you get a different result. So it seems like a good idea just to keep on hammering that shutter button until my cards filled up. But I have picked out a few um, that I particularly like. These ones are March of Stars. I really like the smoke coming off this one. And I really like this one. It's got a little bit of motion blur because um, I think the smoke was traveling quite a lot faster. I think I may have blown this match out and as a result, the smoke looks a little bit more frenetic, which I think is pretty cool and sort of similar on this one. But let's let's start on this one because I really like the match. I really love the amount of flame that we've got going up the um, uh, going up the sides. You really see that burnt charcoaly stick, but you still get the nice flame going all around it. So let's start off and move over into our develop tab. Now the first thing clearly we need to do is do a crop we need to crop in quite close on this because we can see the clamp uh, we've got a lot of wasted space i i had the um viewfinder on the back of the camera set to 69 um which is what i wanted from this but um shooting in raw means that you don't see that so you'd have to put it back so we're going to zoom right in like this and i'm just going to move it up until the uh bottom is no longer in view we're going to straighten it up slightly Something like that, I think looks really good. We've just got a bit of the bottom of the unburnt stick, but the frame is mostly uh, filled with um, the main part of the match, let's call it. Okay, so a few things that we wanna do. I wanna bring the temperature up. I'm gonna bring those highlights down, bring the shadows up. But things that I'm gonna really lean on in this shot, the clarity. Watch what happens as we start to move it up. The flame becomes more defined. All the charcoal becomes more defined. Usually in my photography, the clarity slider does not get touched like this. You may give it a little bit of a nudge. I may paint clarity in, but for this shot, we're really going big. Also going quite big on the dehaze because again, that also really helps bring out those lovely sort of shadows and stuff. It just makes our photo look a lot more rich. And just by doing those couple of things, we've made a huge difference overall to our image. Doesn't that look cool? So I'm gonna bring the temperature back down. I'm gonna keep it in the blues for now and I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later. I'm going to bring down the vibrance and bring up the saturation. Now I often use these two tools in their opposites, bring one down, bring the other up. Sometimes it's saturation down and vibrance up. You just get a different sort of color toning vibe from it. And in this case, I really like what it's done. It's brought out some of the background color, but it's made the things that are important, obviously the color of the flame, that's really standing out now. Again, we flick before and after. It's made a big difference, big difference. Okay, now we're gonna to go to our HSL panel, gonna to go to the hue, and I'm just gonna grab the yellow. Obviously, most of the flame is yellow, so if we drag that too much, it goes fully into orange. Um, I wanted to bring it down a little bit, make it a little more orangey rather than yellow, and I'm gonna do the same with the luminance, bring that down back into the hue. Now our background is quite blue. So what I wanna do is just drag that down a little bit into the cyan because that's just gonna help it have a bit more contrast to the yellow. Those are complementary colors. And I'm gonna bring down the luminance 
and I'm going to bring down the saturation. My hope being is to kind of remove a lot of blue from this. I really want the kind of the only color to be that orange. But what about our purples? There's probably quite a lot of purple in here. In fact, there is. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. A little bit magenta. In fact, I'm just going to kind of grab the other colors all together. The only ones I'm going to leave in are the yellow, orange, and the reds. And I think that's looking quite a lot better already. He's really kind of focused that color into just being about those oranges, which I quite like. Um, anything else I'm not going to touch on here? Um, what about that temperature now? What happens if we sort of move that around? Yeah, I'm going to start to move this up. Not too far, but it just, it makes the oranges more orange. It adds a little bit more orange into the wood here. I just like it. I just like it. That's all I can really say. Um, I'm going to grab a uh, linear radial to uh, sorry a linear gradient or a graduated filter as it's called in this sorry um, and I'm going to just bring it a, a lower exposure and bring that down at the bottom which is going to help darken the bottom it's darkening this bit of wood here which is a little bit overpoweringly bright but the most important thing in this is going to be the brush tool I'm going to reset everything now we're going to increase the exposure increase the highlights increase the whites increase the clarity it's quite a lot of things that we're going to do and i'm just going to zoom in and i'm going to paint this in basically doing some lifting of these details and as i paint it in hopefully you should be able to see that these details just lift up ever so slightly it might need to go even further but if i sort of pulse that whites up and down now you can see how that's popping out a little bit more so let's just ramp that to the top let's do the same with the highlights why not let's just go all in and I'm just going to go down the matchstick painting this in as, as it's as I am doing because we're really kind of ramping up those those white points all these like little highlights are really starting to pop out and that's just making it look even more burnt in a way it's looking even more charred like there's lots of those sort of white charry bits on the outside um, it just makes it look a lot more detailed, um, but it's not affecting the whole image. It's just doing this bit. I'm not going all the way down because this bit's going to start to look quite weird quite quickly with this. Actually, no, you know what? I don't mind it. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in. Let's just zoom back out and I can just turn my brush off and on, off and on. You can see how much detail that's adding in, how much more those things are really popping out. It's just from a couple of minutes of just brushing that in. That's all it needs, a little bit. So I'm gonna consider this shot basically done. I'm really, really happy with how it looks. Tons of detail on the match. And as you can see, it is not a big edit to create a shot like this. Most of the work is done in camera and making sure that the light is hitting the match in the right way. As we've already seen, if you don't use any extra lighting, when you just get a dark shot like this where you can barely see the, the matchstick itself. And instead, what we've done is brought more light but we're still capturing that flame it looks great but we're not done yet if we just copy these settings just out of ease and i'll go over to one of our uh shots with smoke which we want we wanted that smoke i can add that in and straight away we've basically just pasted those settings we've got that little hint of color down here i'm gonna have to do another crop as well of course i think that looks pretty good but what i'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab another graduated filter. Uh, I can leave these settings where they are just for now and see what it looks like. And I'm gonna bring, oh, absolutely not. Okay, fair enough. We bring that right back down. What else is making a problem? The whites, maybe. You know what, let's reset this to nothing just so we can see where we are, see what we're doing. I'm gonna drag this over, increase the highlights because the smoke is pretty much all highlights. I'm gonna really ramp up the clarity Actually, that's causing a problem with this little bit here. What if I brought those highlights back down and just went with the clarity? That looks a little bit better. Touch of contrast. We're basically trying to carve out the white of the smoke away from the background. And this is kind of emphasizing those textures, making it look almost like a fabric, which is sort of floating in the breeze rather than it being smoke. But already that does look quite good. Um, you can just see exactly how much that detail pops out. But... We want to combine these images. So I'm going to select them both, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. 
So here we are in Photoshop and our match, which is our background layer, is on the top. So I'm just going to swap those around. And now with this one, uh, it's not quite as big. Um, it's a smaller crop, but that's okay. We can fix that. I'm going to change the blending mode. I'm going to change it to lighten. And when I do, that means that everything that's lighter than the underlying image is going to show through. In this case, that's going to be the smoke. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, everything's gone weird and you can see the match and it doesn't look quite bright at all and you're absolutely correct that is the case so we're going to grab this layer and just make it bigger so it fills the uh, fills the screen and now i'm just going to move that layer across just so it lines up with the match we took the shot in there with the match in the clamp so they do line up pretty nicely um and as you can see the match sort of blends with this one but we've got a lot of issues with the rest of the image. Now, one of the ways that we're going to fix that is by getting an adjustment layer of levels. And we're just going to add some more contrast. And it's going to turn the, uh, the, the black points of this top image, make them a bit darker. And that's going to allow it to blend much more naturally with the lower image. So what happens if I grab the mid one? No, not the mid one. Let's grab this one. bring both sides in making the black point darker somewhere around there if you start to go too far then it, it go it, we start to lose detail too much contrast it looks weird so i think around that point is looking pretty decent if we look before and after what it's done is we still got all the smoke detail there but it's made the background layer darker and in so doing in fact we need to clip that to this layer so doing it, it's kind of making these background bits uh, blend more with the main background, if that makes sense. You see that grey has sort of gone, it's blended with our background, but it's not perfect. So we need to go onto this layer, create a layer mask. Um, it's a white layer mask, everything is showing through. I'm going to get a large brush, paint with black, and I've got a fairly high flow. And as I paint with black, you will just see that that layer starts to disappear we can just paint it away and I don't really need to paint I think any further than where the match was it is a little difficult for me to see to be honest because I've got this huge video light overhead and um, as a result I am getting quite a lot of glare in my eyes and so I can't quite tell very subtle contrast differences but to my eye right now that one little bit of brushing is all we need it's gonna look I mean, it looks good. It looks pretty decent. I don't think we need to really do anything else. Um, you can see how easy it is just to blend in uh, that smoke. It's all about just using that one blending mode of lighten to allow that smoke to come through. I'm annoyed by this little hot spot we've got here. So let's just go over to that. I'm going to create a new layer by, that combines the uh, lower down layers. And all I'm going to do Let's just see if I can get the um, the clone stamp tool. Take a clone from over here. No, that's not gonna work. Now you know what, let's do another way. Let's use the patch tool. I'm gonna draw a ring around that, drag it over there. Mm, it's done a decent job, but let's just neaten it up with the spot removal tool. Zoom back out. It's basically fine. A little bit messy. If you, if I took a bit more time, I could make, I could do a neater job with that. But I'm happy enough. Just you can see where I'm going. You can see what I'd want to do with that. Um, the other thing that we could do even is um, grab the puppet warp tool, um, which I could show you. In fact, let's actually let's do that. Let's why not do that? Let's turn that layer off. And on this layer, we go to edits and we go to puppet warp. And now, if I just put in some points around here. I don't really know exactly how the puppet wall tool works, but there we go. We can just drag our smoke around. Look at that. We can just move it around. These are anchor points keeping it in place. So now we can sort of move the smoke if we want it more of a curve up here. A bit more of this. And then apply. There we go. Oh, we can see we've got some problems here. So we need to go back to our mask. Uh, get the brush tool. And then we just brush that away as we did before. Check for any weird errors, any weird bits. Again, to my eye right now, I can't see any. Maybe you are looking at them and going, oh my God, how have you not seen that? But I can't, so I'm happy enough. 
save takes us back into Lightroom and now we've got a finished shot where we've got the match looking really cool with those charcoal bits. We've got the flame. We've also got the lovely swirling smoke. We've got rid of that hot spot. I'm really happy with this shot overall um, and I think it's been a really great learning tool for me. It's been amazing to just play around with balancing that light, trying to get the, the, uh, the flame itself looking really cool, but still having plenty of light on the match and also getting the light on the smoke. Um, genuinely, if you haven't tried this before, it is really, really good fun. And it takes very, uh, it take, well, it, it does take quite a lot of effort, um, but it, it takes a box of matches and a, and a light. You can use a speed light, you can use uh, a lamp, have some fun, experiment, and please definitely, if you do give this a try, um, based on my video, send me some results. Hit me up on Instagram with at batteryhq and and uh, show me show me what you've managed to do because I really would be keen to see uh, what people do with this. Um, but that does bring me to an end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope everyone is staying safe right now. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. Definitely please subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.